I'm dressed all in red on purpose because today we're talking about the bloody romance movie, Meet Cute. Hey Errol, it's good to meet with you. Tell me how Meet Cute got started. The, uh, the inception of Meet Cute was, I was at the Canab Film Festival um, last year with, a, uh, with another film I made, Wrong Way Down. And I, I was talking to a horror filmmaker um, and we were, she was talking about how, how, you know, all the stories have been told, right? You know, there's no such thing as an original work. Uh, and the, the key to fooling people into thinking that there was would be to put a spin on it that we hadn't seen before. I had the thought, what if two people met in the woods when they both thought of the same place to dump a body? And from there, it just kind of snowballed. I ran up to to my uh, my lead actor, who was also in Wrong Way Down, and I, I said, I have an idea. I think this is the next thing. I think this is our next project. Now, let's take a minute and talk about the process of getting your filmmaking team together to make the short film. So I met Josh uh, at, at the Canab Fest um, last last year, as well as uh, as well as our editor and a first assistant director uh, Emily Colton. Um, uh, Josh was there when I told Aaron about Meet Cute, and he was like, "Well, I want to be a part of this," and I was like, "Hey, great! You know, that's one less person I have to recruit, right?" Assembling this this uh, crew was in a lot of ways simpler than than what I had had to do before because um, we have the same uh, cinematographer as Wrong Way Down. We have the same sound person as Wrong Way Down. We have the same lead actor. Um, Jenica, who plays um, the, the other lead in Meet Cute, uh, recorded a couple voice lines for Wrong Way Down, so she and I were already connected. Uh, so it was really... Uh, it was really a, a reunion of sorts, um, bringing all this, bringing these people together. Uh, and I've, I've, I've loved working with, with all of them. I think it's been, it's been really great. Now let's go on back in time a little bit. I want to go to the day before you started the production. Was there anything that might've been stressing you out? <sighs> uh, well, we, for this film, we rented a, uh, a rain rig. Um, because one of the one of the final shots of the film uh, has the two characters after they've dismembered the corpses and everything. You know, they share their first kiss, and uh, we get transported to this sort of ethereal space where it's raining blood on them. Right. Uh, so the day before production, I was trying to figure out how we were going to get that rain rig up to uh, Colville where we were shooting. There, there's a moment uh, in every production that I've had where I have just a, just a little bit of a breakdown. Uh, and I wonder, is this something I can even do? Is this going to come together? Like, or is it going to just crash and burn spectacularly? Uh, I had several of those moments here. Um, and one of those was before we even started shooting. So that was fun. <laughs> okay, so tell me about the first day on set. Well, we got up to the location, and we had found the location uh, a couple months earlier, a month earlier. I can't, I can't remember exactly when we, we found it relative to the start of shooting. Um, but we get up to the location, and the, the ground is blanketed in snow. <clears throat> and that wasn't... I, I don't want to say that wasn't going to work. I was thinking of ways to uh, change the script if I had to, to account for so much snow on the ground. The one big advantage of that is that uh, blood on the snow looks really good. So we had that going for us. So we get to the location. We see that there's a bunch of snow on the ground. And then I say, well, uh, I know where I want to shoot like here on location, I think you guys aren't going to like me because the, uh, the place that I wanted to shoot, the clearing that I wanted to shoot in, 
um, was at the top of a hill about the, you know, couple hundred feet, uh, which meant lugging a bunch of heavy gear uh, up a hill in the snow. That wasn't fun. <laughs> and I definitely got some, uh, we'll say, some colorfully worded comments uh, from a couple crew. I don't blame them. I'm not, like, bitter about that. I I was cursing my own name, too. I was like, this is stupid. Why did I want this location? We got all the, we got all the gear up there, and by the time it was getting close to actually, like, time to shoot, there was a lot less snow on the ground. Um, so what you'll be able to see in the movie is that there is some snow on the ground in the beginning, and then by the end, there is none. Uh, so I guess the snow melts really fast in this movie. Do you have any other stories from set you could share? Partway through production, we find out that uh, one of the... Um, that we, we are missing a piece that's necessary for our, uh, not our, our rain rig, but our blood pump um, that would be needed to, you know, spray blood onto the actors. <clears throat> and uh, so we had to send a couple people to get uh, that part from a Home Depot. Um, and then <sighs> there were a lot of, of, little challenges that reared their heads you know murphy's law was kind of in full effect here it didn't help that we uh had started shooting on friday the 13th um we we're, we were really smart and we were like hey it'd be really cool to start shooting a horror movie on friday the 13th right we had a bunch of little challenges and um i'm not gonna lie like some of them were pretty discouraging we were always behind schedule right because that's how it is on a film set uh, you know, you show up on time, you're late, right? And we we get to this scene. It's the first scene where we do any blood, and it's this it's this scene where where Aaron lifts a machete above his head and then brings it down, and blood is supposed to come, you know, splashing up onto him, right? And that that was a, a scene I was nervous about for a while because I thought we don't have time for a lot of takes with this. So he's got to bring the machete down and then they have, uh, he and Jenica have like a half page of dialogue after that um, while they're covered in blood. And so it was essentially like we need to get this done in one take and so he brings the machete down and they keep it straight for the whole rest of the take and then at the at the end when i yell cut it's like <laughs> that was our moon landing right that was where that was where everything finally kind of came together uh it was really it was really really exhilarating and I, I remember there was just a big celebration after that take finished because that was the moment where people were where, where everyone unanimously was like this is gonna work um and so i went back and i watched playback to make sure that we didn't need another take and we didn't i they got it. So what you see in the movie is the only take we shot. But you got through it. So how did you and your team feel once you actually called that's a wrap? There was a sense of community, right? There, it, it has to be a really bad shoot for people not to bond. And this wasn't a bad shoot. There were, there were problems. Sure. You know, there were, there were, there were issues that arose, but overall, um, there was a really sweet kind of coming together that we experienced. Uh, I know that um, our one of one of the people who plays uh, a corpse in the movie uh, was also kind of our de facto uh, second assistant director, and uh, 
he and Emily, the editor, have been uh, have been have have continued uh, correspondence. They've you know become close friends, uh, which is really cool. I always like seeing that happen uh, and knowing that you know they met on my set. It's really nice. So how is Meet Cute shaping up in post-production? I always say that a film is written three times. It's written when you write the script, it's written when you shoot, and it's written in the edit. And a lot of what we shot um, was was, uh, very carefully planned out in the shot list. Um, we had a lot of shots. It was a very ambitious shot list, uh, to a fault. I want to take responsibility for the shot list being too ambitious. We were shooting over three days and we really needed probably two more at least. Everyone came, everyone came through, everyone stepped up and did a really good job. And we were able to consolidate some shots from the shot list and, you know, compress that. Um, so a lot of this movie was, was kind of pre-edited in the shot list. When I first saw Emily's rough cut of the, of the film, um, it was, I, I watched it and I thought, this isn't a rough cut. This is a fine cut. Uh, and th- that, that just speaks to the quality of, of Emily's work. Uh, they're, they're really terrific. And so when we got together and had, um, had an edit session, I, they made my job just really easy. Um, they made my job really easy. Uh, they had gotten a lot of, uh, they'd, they, they had done, you know, the vast, majority of the of the edit work already um a lot of what i did with them was just fine tuning um and uh shuffling some things around in the ending so where exactly is meet cute right now in post uh right now we just um got the the score done and so i believe josh is editing that uh is is mixing that um right now uh doing the post sound so Josh is doing the the post sound right now and uh, mixing the score. So that that is kind of the last step, I think. Um, Emily and I are going to do another uh, mastering session just to do last minute tweaks, make sure everything's good there. Um, but yeah, it is it is very close. Uh, we have a a fine cut with a temp score um, that that uh, we can watch and refer to. Uh, but yeah, no, it's it's very close. So what are your festival goals? Are there any festivals you're hoping to get into? We want to submit to Slam Dance with this one. Uh, that's I, I, I kind of in my in my brain, I kind of have uh, an idea of like one big fest, you know, one one major fest that I want to submit to with everything I make. Um, and so this this time, I think it's Slam Dance. I just have a good feeling about that one. Um, but the, the goal for the festival run is, yeah, no, I just want to get people to watch it. This is such, this is such a wild movie and it's different from a lot of the stuff that I think we see in the dark comedy, uh, slash horror market. Um, because it really is like a pretty earnest rom-com that's soaked in blood. And I don't think we see that a whole lot. Errol, what's your favorite thing about attending the film festivals? I like meeting people uh, because the way I see it, uh, it's opportunities to collaborate with people. That's what happened with Meet Cute. You know, I saw I saw Water Babies uh, at Canab Film Fest and I knew I wanted to work with Josh because I really liked Water Babies. Um, And. I connected with Emily at Canab Film Fest. I know I wanted to work with them. Uh, and then, and I've, I've, there, there are a lot of people, there are a lot of people who I met at Canab Film Fest uh, the pre- previous years that I've gone who want to see this movie and who are excited about uh, seeing this movie at the fest. Um, so it's really uh, about building a network for me as when I, when I attend a film fest. 
Uh, I love, I love that part of it. I love doing that. It's, I like meet and greets. I like all of those different filmmaker events, you know? Now that your short film Meet Cute's all wrapping up, do you have any other projects in the works? Um, I have a feature script that I've been working on for a long time now um, that I am trying to get ready to uh, shop around a bit. That's that's the big goal. Um, as far as a short, uh, I have a number of things rattling around in my brain. Uh, I have a couple of things like outlined um, uh, one one in particular that I think would be pretty uh, simple to shoot. I don't want to say easy, but simple. Um, and I have some people interested in that. Um, but as of right now, uh, the the big next thing is uh, prepping my feature. I I really want to get this made. Uh, I want to do it sooner rather than later because I know it's going to take a long time already. You know, I want to take a step back. Can you take a few minutes and talk about your stellar team? The the experience of working on Meet Cute uh, has been an experience of getting to work with some just really tremendous people. Um, we have Aaron John, who is is kind of my muse. Uh, he's been he's been the lead on the last three things I've done, um, and. I just, I love, I love the guy. He is a big sweetheart and he uh, brings enthusiasm and uh, excitement to every, every uh, production that he, that he approaches. Um, You've got uh, my lead, uh, Jenica Anasuya, uh, who is just, I I mean, I don't know if you know Jenica. She's fantastic. All right. She's, she is uh a really terrific performer um she has some of the she has some of the sweetest moments in this movie and without those moments being sweet the movie doesn't work uh so she she does a really good job walking that tightrope of uh between really sweet and really messed up um and she 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 walks it beautifully um emily Emily Colton, my editor and first assistant director, um, they have been a rock for me throughout this whole process. Uh, you know, I talked about how I had a number of small meltdowns throughout the throughout the production process, and um, they they helped talk me down from those, uh, which is you know just so invaluable for me. Um, You've got Josh, who uh, brought his amazing um, prop master skills. I mean, th- this movie is gross. And uh, for that, we can thank uh, the props, the blood, um, the sound design, and all of that is Josh. And uh, he also just did a really good job of... Um, making sure that uh, he did a really good job making sure that this thing came together. Um, He was the one who approached me and was like, Hey, when are we going to be making this? Uh, And so he, he really got the ball rolling on production. I would say Um, we've got Cassidy Henderson, who is uh, my director of photography extraordinaire. I have said before that if I make a hundred more things, uh, in Utah, then I want to have Cassidy on every one of them. Uh, it's fun working with Cassidy because it's an experience where I'll start a thought about something creatively and she'll finish it. We're very much on the same wavelength there. And it's a really cool experience. Um, I, I love working with, with Cassidy. Um, and then our, uh, sound on this was James Kettle. Uh, and if you don't know James, he is fantastic. He, uh, we would, um, explain, you know, how, how we were going to be getting uh, sound for this particular scene. And if it was tricky or, you know, challenging in any way, he'd kind of have this, like this kind of pensive nod for a second as he looked at the script and he's like, all right. And then he would, and then he would get the sound. It's really, it was really cool. Um, my good friend, uh, my 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 brother Dustin Effinger, 
uh, he plays the other corpse in this movie. I play one of the corpses, by the way. Um, he plays the other corpse, and uh, he ended up being our second assistant director. We found he was just really good at wrangling actors and making sure that they were taken care of. Uh, and so that that became um, that became uh, his role, and he filled it just tremendously. Um, he did a great job with that, and uh, proved to be a very invaluable part of this of this process. He also helped me uh, when I was writing the film. He looked over my drafts and provided notes. Uh, he get, he provides some of the funniest lines in this movie, um, it, like to the point where he would sometimes give me a line, and then I'd be like damn it what why are you better at my job than i am <laughs> Ca oh cassidy's camera crew uh jace jensen and ryan farmer both were just terrific they uh they were always like one step ahead when it came to like okay what's the next setup what are we going to need for that let's get the equipment um they they kept the machine running and it it was absolutely uh you know, they, they ended up being very crucial and I couldn't be happier with uh, the work they did. I want to give a shout out to Michael Adams, who uh, co-wrote this script with me. Um, this was my first experience in co-writing. Uh, and Michael is a really good writing partner. Um, he He's great to bounce ideas off of. Um, but then when you get into the nitty gritty of writing, uh, he doesn't bs you uh he tells you what's working what's not working and um additionally he reinforces you when something does work he's like that's really funny right or you know that's you know that's really good and uh and he really did help uh bolster me through a lot of the writing process um and so uh i will definitely be working with michael again um one of the things that we are uh one of the shorts that I have in mind, um, he and I have already written a couple drafts of, and I'm pretty happy with the direction that's going. Errol, thank you so much. I'm excited to see Meet Cute when it's all done at the festivals. And guys, if you have a film that's wrapping up production and ready to start on the festival circuit, I wanna talk to you guys too. Head over to warrenworkman.com and sign up for an interview, and I'll see everybody else at the festivals.